Introducing the humble Plan 9 bundle. Plan 9? Wouldn't that be, like, grossly unfair to, you know, users of any modern operating system? Fuck them. And it's a source code bundle. How the hell are they supposed to compile it? It's for charity. Coming up on this Linux Gamecast Weekly, Photonica trips us the hell out, Rob Zombie shows up in a soundtrack for a new Kickstarter project, Intel kind of cocks us over, and we talk about a humble betrayal. Or is it? Let's go. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers Linux gaming news, hardware reviews, interviews, and sometimes just what we come up with. And joining me, as always, this man, this legend, this myth, here he is, he's Jordan Zwang. How's it going, man? Myth. Well, I guess I, guess I could be mythological. In well, a way. You're mythological I don't know. In this... I don't know where I was going with that. Never mind. I'm fine. How are you? Uh, well, seriously, if I'm going to bother to take the corporeal form one time a week, you can at least be a myth. Yes. Well, never mind your gassiness. What have you been up to this week? <laughs> Couple of things, man. Couple of things. I guess the um, most important is um, I have to do a pink man and go. Yeah, bitch. Golden are you, Ticket. Are, are you going to sing the Golden Ticket song? Nine. No I Golden think, I, Ticket I, I, song. I think if you're actually saying you have a Golden Ticket, you are legally obligated by the copyright law of 1975 to like sing the I've got a Golden Ticket na, 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 thing. So That's a really start singing, long okay. way of just saying you have some weird fetish where you want to watch me dance, but still talking about... The Golden Ticket. Do you know what the difference between a um, hack Steam Beta and the Golden Ticket Steam Beta is? I know it, what it is because you told me, and it's actually kind of funny. You get TF2 and the TF2 Beta. That's about it. Um, and when I say that's about it, no, genuinely, that is about it, guys. Um, so don't think that you're missing out. You do have right access. Yeah, the, that, 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 that would be the one thing, the ability to file bug reports. The, the beta forms, but you're not missing out anything. Um, there's no unicorns farting rainbows or anything like that that you might have missed Damn. out on. But you, on, you've, you've completely shattered the illusion of the Steam beta. I, I was going in doing like that. full-on rainbow fart and unicorns. And mm -hmm. Now I don't this, know what to believe. Woke up this morning thinking about doing that to you, and now my life is complete. But what have you been up to, man? Oh, absolutely nothing. Oh, I guess that's not true. Um, I started futzing around with getting Steam running on my desktop because um, I had previously had it running on my laptop. My desktop is a Fedora 16 box, and I have since discovered that it is less simple than I had originally thought to get um, to get Steam running on a Fedora 16 box you don't because say. of this little library called LibX11. What be this LibX11? So, according to some research, and I could be pants on wrong, and the, the S trace for this is like freaking pages, so I haven't even started to look at it. Um, apparently, Fedora 16 has an older version of a couple packages that make use of that, or an older version of a couple libraries that do not have some functions that the Steam client actually needs to make use of. So, it's either try and create some sort of Franken build between Fedora 16 and 17 which is a bit tougher than you might think given the uh, user move in Fedora 17. Uh, so I figure I'm eventually just going to move this thing to the Fedora 18 beta and fight my way through that. Sounds like a plan, man. Indeed. It, anything else but on your hemisphere? On my hemisphere. We live in the same hemisphere. Lies. Lies. No, but... Um, but uh, I'm not sure if you wanted to bring this up that early. Something involving outlets or plugs? Well, it is a plug, and it's something that um, we need to say. Linux Gamecast is brought to you by, and that's your wet, stinky cash. And you can find out more at linuxgamecast.com forward slash podcast. You can see these fine, horrible gentlemen up here. 
where you can subscribe to all our fun stuff, but our important or, or, thing, or purchase brass knuckle mugs, apparently. Look at this. Our sponsors know us well because brass knuckle mugs, I'm seriously, I mean, good on them. Check this out. If you want to throw us just a few bits of monies, um, check out our Amazon affiliate link. You click on that. Anything you buy, we get a bit of a taste, doesn't impact anything that you do. Except your marriage, because when the Amazon man comes by to shut up your wife. He's got a fetish about that. But seriously, you can click on that. I mean, if you're in IT or whatever, you know, switch over some codes. That'd be awesome. We could use that bit of money. But if you just want to make a one-time donation, which is completely cool with us, big yellow button. You know what that's for. That's the PayPal. That's, that's the give us money button. And you're thinking, maybe this is all for hookers and blow, but that is a complete lie, isn't it? Well, a half lie. It's I, like I, a I three quarter lie. Kind of, I find Ven is kind of like the devil. He doesn't tell lies, but he doesn't tell the truth either. Hmm. You're still sore about that wax museum incident, aren't you? Damn right I am. Hmm. But, anyways. Anyways. Throw what us a few will your bones. donations go towards? There's a, cu a few things, man. I mean, we can get LGC, Linux Gamecast Weekly, out to you sooner. We can also set up a live streaming box, maybe a chat room and all that. That's Everything is possible. We just need the hardware to do it. Maybe have some guests on. And when I say maybe, we definitely want to do that. And eventually it might even come out of my own pocket if we can raise a few shackles to do that and finally we're going to get this poor bastard a microphone yay interestingly enough do you know shekel is one of the few English language words that can be spelt with a Q and not a U really yes I absolutely didn't care exactly but anyways we have some troubling news from the land of the internets well we have a humble indie bundle, and I always like to start this off with... Let's get ready to... Betrayal! Betrayal? Betrayal. Why, why, why are we having betrayal, bro? Why are we having betrayal, bro? Because, bro, we have a humble indie bundle that is not cross-platform and is Windows only. I, I am seeing the um, Windows only logo up here, bro. Yeah, nice little squares, some some quadrilateral shapes. I am both angered and confused. I was frustrated, and then I thought about it. But we'll get into that. So, Ven, what's your take on it? You know, man, my take on this is a few things. Um, it's a branding issue. Uh, we've had a few days to get over our little um, nerd rage and aneurysms. This should not be a humble bundle, bundle anything, because one thing the guys at Humble are trying to say is, this is in addition to, and that's kind of what we joked about with our intro, is y you need to separate the brands. The Humble Indie Bundle is all about no DRM, cross-platform, and donating, especially to the EFF and Child's Play Charity and all that fun stuff. But THQ supported SOPA. Got a big issue with that. On top of that, this one's Windows only, DRM via Steam. And here's the big thing, Jordan. What is it then? If this was a Linux only bundle under this same type of deal, I would bitch equally, man. Mm hmm. What's your take? My take on it? Well, I've I've said this many times before. I come I I come to this podcast from the perspective of just a general gamer. Then then um, as, as he said before, he's bought the entire catalog of Loki games just to support Loki games. Ah, yes, our um, the, 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 this this site he pulls up is pretty funny. I'll get to that. In a we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, I. I do not care about this bundle because I already own all these games. <laughs> that, 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 that's the long and short of it. Either I own all the games or I'm not interested in playing them. Uh, when I saw that, 
my, my friend at work came to me. He's like, hey, check humble.com and I'm or uh, humblebundle.com, and I'm like, okay, and I, I I see this thing where it's like Steam only, and I'm like, my gut reaction is a string of profanities that I'm gonna save for the after show, but um, and 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 eventually I calm down and I'm and rational Jordan took over and he's like, you know, why do you care? You already own all these games. And I'm like, oh yeah, wow. Um, but I mean, I mean, it does kind of hurt them in a way. I, I, I know a lot of my friends have just like bought the bundle for like a dollar because they don't support this, but they still want the games. I don't um, really support this. I, like I said, I genuinely believe that it's just a bad branding issue. They should have called this the um. Humble Windows only uh, bundle let, that has let's nothing save, to let's do. Let's try and save THQ's ass bundle. Basically, man. Because how much is THQ worth, man? THQ, and I, I actually wrote this down. THQ is actually worth 141 as, as of about five minutes ago on Sunday, December 2nd. Um, 141,448 wacky, wavy, inflatable, arm flailing tube men. Or 15,254 lightsaber replicas. And seven Lindsay Lohans. My fa my favorite, though, has to be uh, something like 14,000 time machines, or 7,000 time machines, based off, of, uh, uh, based off of their stocks and the DeLorean Motor Company. That's fantastic, man. I really like that. But speaking of the humble and all that, you know, if you like it, you like it. You don't like it, you don't like it. Everybody's got the thing. There's a lot of viral reaction to, you know, pitchforks at, and all that fun stuff. And I get it, at, trust me. At, at the same time, though, it, they said outright, we're not going to stop with the Linux ports. And to be fair, a couple of these are AAA titles that perhaps porting them to Linux may not be feasible given licensing and whatnot. Well, maybe with the licensing, that would be the only issue, because we're going to talk a bit later in the show with Ryan C. Gordon, not with, but about what about. his interview was and how difficult it is to port some of these um, AAA titles over. But with that... An another indie distributor has stepped up. Yeah, they have. I mean, this is kind of a crazy topsy-turvy world we're living in, man. I mean, up is down, left and right, cheese Cats is and dogs living together, stuff. mass hysteria. But what we have is Steam on Linux, Humble Indie Bundle on Windows, and now Indie City Blog is going Linux. Tip jaw now live. This is from blog.indiecity.com. Indie City coming to Linux. And what are they looking for, man? They are looking for uh, people who are into Linux games. Who would be working on. Um, who, uh, they're pe they're on the lookout for people with Linux games and people who want to get their games out to a larger audience. They're also looking for testers. Yeah, they are looking for you know if you're a developer and you want to get on the Steam bandwagon, Desura, and now indie game, you can also send a tip over. But not only that. If you're just looking to test out, beta test the client, they're open for that. So you should definitely screech over there. And here's one thing that I Dude, really liked. The Linux version is coming before the Mac version. Right here. For those of you who are waiting for news on the Mac version of Indie City, we're working on it. It should be ready fairly shortly after the Linux launch. That warmed my cockle. That warms the cockles of that mass of crust that you call your heart. Mm. It's good stuff, man. But, um, in other news, we have a bit of a question here. Well, it's a bit it's, of a question. How are we going to play all these games, man? I think we're going to play them on the K-Desktop environment if Michael Arabel has anything to say about that. Why is KDE great for gaming? Well, um... It's not... Nope. Next story. Intel Next story. is preparing to put an end to user replaceable CPUs, man. No. I heard about this at the beginning of the week or like the end of last week, and I just flew into a rage. A Jordan rage or just a regular rage? Which one? A, jo a Jordan rage involves like broken household items and ruining of 
thousand dollar pieces of computer hardware. So regular if you've rich. ever gotten a fight with a Jordan Rage, it's all teeth and nails. It's teeth, nails, and like concealed weapons you didn't think was possible to conceal. And some bits that he stole from that wax museum incident that we don't really talk about anymore. Hey, 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 you locked me in there. Had it come But anyways, yeah. so we are getting rid of, or not we, Intel is getting rid of socketable CPUs. And this sucks. Bend over, and humans. From, and, th and, and this is from ZDNet.com, by the way. Yeah, what are they or said DNets. Um, and my take on this is... You know, this is why I've always bought, not always, but, you know, for the past decade, I just bought AMD. I know for the past at least five years, maybe four years, to be fair, they have not been the best price performance thing. Well, actually, their, their price performance has been pretty good. It's just when I'm putting together a high-end PC, I want the best performing parts. And as much as I like AMD, Intel has better performing parts. Hmm. But what we're getting into is... They're going kind of different from a BGA to LGA package. Now, what's the difference between these two, man? Can you give us a little bit of insight on that one? Um, BGA to LGA. Mm -hmm. Well, LGA is their logical gateway. That's like the that's like the pin setup you use when you plop in your motherboard. To like the, a um, zip socket, right? You drop it. Yeah. In. It, um, L, L, LGA is log. I think it's logical gateway. I don't remember by. I remember taking a class where it actually right. expanded all you're these right. acronym, right. acronyms. There's also like um, plastic pin array and whatnot. But anyways, so uh, BGA means that the the uh, the chips are soldered on the board, exactly. which is horrible. But this it's is something kill that the motherboard market. They're trying this to get us to used to. I mean, it's something ah. we see with you know you buy an ARM device or a lower end you know um, HTPC. Well, you're going to see ARM this. Device, but... ARM devices make sense. ARM devices make sense. They're supposed to be small and low powered, so an SOC type thing is good. But these are like big, powerful computers and servers. Or laptops. Or laptop. Well, la laptops now. Now, now that Apple's doing it, other people are going to start doing it and just start soldering parts onto the board, which really sucks because I like, like, some some laptop parts are really freaking expensive if you buy them through the OEM, and it's cheaper just to go out and buy them yourself and install them, like solid state drives. Indeed, I did like your point that you brought up with the motherboards because that's a very, it's going to kill the motherboard market unless it's going to kill everyone who doesn't want to play ball with Intel. And take here's what you got to think about, because now Intel's not responsible for the customer service thing because it's a bundled package. They're going to be calling mm -hmm. the motherboard manufacturer because it's a single part. Well, no, Intel, Intel already manufactures motherboards. They're they're right. they're they're essentially my my biggest fear is when it comes time like in three four year, in yeah two three years to replace my desktop over there or there so you can see where I point. Ah. Very informative. Very informative, but anyways, um, I'm going to have to buy a computer that I did not put together, and that disturbs me. There, there's this trend for soldering things onto motherboard to improve space requirements. I'm thinking, like, because they're they they can not possibly kill like LGA pin L LGA interfaces for like servers. So I'm thinking I might have to go to the server app just from regular PCs. But you know, just the, so I can put them together. They're thinking about that. And I guarantee you if you've ever priced Intel server processors, you Oh man. Right. That's... You hit that wall right there and that's going to become the new enthusiast market. Now I'm hoping that we'll either get somebody else into the market or we'll see a Phoenix from AMD, or maybe AMD will think and go, wait a minute, we have a market here, let's do something made of awesome saws. A AMD might, but they seem to want to break more into the mobile market. Because mm. that, because really that's where the money is. People, ch people switch out their iPhones and their smartphones every friggin' two years. People built people get a PC and they don't replace We don't need lot. AMD going away though, because I remember growing up you know, when I was an early teenager, you know... A Way back in caveman <clears throat> times. I know, hack, hack. And paying $700 for a mid-range Intel part because, you know, the only option outside of that was like a Cyrix 
and I kid you not, they <laughs> were they were like ninety eight percent Intel compatible. They said it on the actual chip. Ninety eight percent. It was really fun running some of the early and Elder Scroll games on those guys. But what do we got up next? Good news from Intel, though. Well, yes, we get our IGP performance is going up again, which is actually pretty nice because I, I've been playing, uh, I've been playing some Steam games on my laptop using the Intel IGP, and the performance has actually been pretty decent. So any improvements on that, those are better. What, what, what did you say? It's like 50 frames per second on, like, Nexus and... Yeah, from the release, this is from um, IntelLinuxGraphics.org. What we have, um, basic 2D and 3D Haswell support with all the PCI IDs, OpenGL support for Haswell, initial OpenGL 3.1 support, hardware-accelerated video decoding, and encoding for Haswell. And we're averaging about 50-plus frames per second in Zontic and Nexus, and that is with a four-year-old Intel 4500. That, that's, pr that's pretty kick-ass, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, and considering that really shouldn't be happening, that's, that's just neat. Yeah, it, it kind of makes me think, man, we've kind of been underutilizing our IGPs. If, if really just driver tuning can get us that. That's where it's going. I think, um, say what you want about Valve as a company. They really put some sauce in the um, Intel, awesome AMD, sauce. and um, NVIDIA market. Say, you need to get this up to snuff like Windows. And we've seen that in less than like two or three months. I mean, it's went from wham. Now, now, I, I don't want to say two or three months because Valve has obviously been working on this for some time now. I'm talking about they, release, not necessarily how long they've been no, working on it. Oh, rele release, yeah. Okay. that That's a bit more make sensical. But anyways, there is a man, then. A man you didn't know by the name of Iculus, and you originally asked me... Yes, yes. But I was going to say, there's a man, this man who once worked for your favorite company of all time. Microsoft? No. Um, a certain Norse god of lies. Hewlett Packard. Yes, the North god of lies, Hewlett Packard, who stabbed Balder in the eye with a stick of ram and IBM. said, you got to call our technical you, support. You're talking about IBM, aren't you? It's IBM, isn't it? Yes, that's exactly what it is. I'm waiting for you to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. You're going to complete the sentence whether you like it or not. Or this podcast is going to go on for like six hours of just silence. I got the hard drive space. So do I. Bring it on. <laughs> I got 20. Dude, I have 20 terabytes of storage in my room. Come at me, bro. Dick's that big. Um, but no, he is talking about former Loki Games employee Ryan C. Gordon, also known as Iculus. And the guys over at um, CheerfulGhost.com CheerfulGhost.com Had a fun little interview with him, and there was a couple of neat things they asked him, man. Mm -hmm. I read the interview. It was actually kind of interesting. Yeah, I guess we should point out that he is responsible for porting Braid, Shank, Psychonauts, Prey, Google Earth, Unreal 2004, Postal 2, and etc. That's a pretty impressive resume. And that's just the tip of the um, cheeseburg, man. Just the very tip. I like the fact that he want, if he had his way, he would port Shadow of Colossus to Linux. I'm 100% behind that. That yeah. game was amazing. I completely agree with you on that one, man. I think um, one of the questions they asked was, you know, one of the major reasons publishers and developers give for not releasing the Linux versions of their games is that the demand doesn't justify the extra development cost. And then this guy comes and says, it takes me like a month to do it, and... Yeah. It runs well across multiple Linuxes. Where is your excuse now? Well, I mean, that's the man saying it to you. Like, first of all, I think he does point out that 
it's short-sighted. Now, that's something, you know, we talked about earlier with our Kickstarter goal, because that's one thing I want to ensure. Because if you don't develop your engine or your game, well, you, it doesn't matter. Your anything cross-platform, you're not ever going to go back and do it later. And if you do, you're gonna, probably going to have to hire him to do it. I think this guy needs to, like, start training people and like taking him under his taking them under his wing so we can have like an army of these guys who are really good at really quick at like porting games to Linux and then release them into the wild and let them port like the existing catalog of games on Steam to Linux and then I can throw away my Windows partition forever. Well it looks like he's getting plenty of work because when he was asked you know now with Steam coming to Linux except or whatevs he basically said, you know, with Steam launching, I've lost count of what I'm working on. Now, that makes me a happy panda. That makes me a bit sad. This guy's getting swamped with work. You need some backup. Might be a good time to throw some resumes in his direction. Might be. Audience. Yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more. Say no more, say, say no Mind more. that. But they also ask... Um, How's the work on IO Doom 3 going? And I think you got a response to that, don't you? Yeah, it stalled. Mm. Um, but uh, he, he says that everyone's a lot more into porting... Uh, or, sorry, everyone was a lot more passionate about Quake 3 than Doom 3, so... Yeah, uh, well... And I, I, I mean, like, Doom 3 was an alright game. Quake 3 was, like, a piece of magic stuffed into a CD-ROM and shipped to people, so... Are you trying to say it might have been Awesome Sauce? Yes. But I've already used the word Awesome Sauce, and I didn't want to fall back on it. Yeah, you're at two, and I think I'm at three now, so we got to be careful so we don't violate anything. And to wrap up that little interview with that, um, they did ask, what was your favorite project to work on? And surprisingly, it wasn't a game, man. What was it? No, it was Google Earth. And he did point out that um, living under a desk at the um, Googs for a month was an amazing experience, and he misses it sometimes, like I miss um, not having a taco right now. How about you? I could go for a taco. Yeah. I love tacos. Tacos are awesome. But anyways, we got some news from RootGamer.com. Rootgamer.com, a new critter on the scene, but they're talking about Doom 3, uh, BFG, we LOL, OMG, WTF, released under GPL. What do we have to say about this, Jordan? We've already talked about this. We have talked about this almost to ad nauseum. We have talked about this to exhaustion. Let's move on. Well, you know, I'm not going to completely blow by it. Um, I do no. want to say good on you, Bethesda, for sticking with the old um, id <laughs> software of releasing game engines man i mean and yeah good on you guys man good on you guys and i think we genuinely both me and jordan hope that um as someone who's taken a look at the um, io doom 3 bit someday someone outside of carmac um can genuinely make sense of what the hell's going on in there wouldn't never going to happen carmac just like pulls random magic numbers out of his butt and okay. makes magic happen. Well, I guess you're not going to say that last bit then. So, I guess not. What have we got up next? It's a little bit uh, of gaming news for change, but not quite gaming news because we're not into the game segment yet, and that is in Linux Gamecast How To, something you might have grown to love us for if you have followed Linux Gamecast for the past couple of years before we started doing a podcast. And before that, it was long, all long Wax Museum. But here's where we are now. Let's check with the judge. Now, last week, judge. Jordan, we talked about this little script of... DX9 frames. Yeah, DX9 frames. Something that people have been using on the Windows side for quite a while to improve the um, just awesomeness of how fast the TF2 install was running, right? Mm hmm So, here's the... We dive. have... Yeah, here's the... Yeah. It, it's a bit daunting to get on, because I got a 
ton of email, and by ton, I do mean about like 15 emails. Like, how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? I got tired of answering them, so I made this. Now, this little guide will walk you through getting everything together and putting the script together, making it executable, installing it, and executing it with your native Linux Steam client. Easy peasy, Bob's your uncle. You can see 27 people have even bothered to download it on top of watching from the Flash goodness. So, yeah. good on that. Write us back in those comments on linuxgamecast.com and share your experiences. I do believe there's already one little note. One of our... No, there's a couple. It's working beautifully here for Andrew and... Shannon von Wagner. One banger. Um, let's see. Uh, apparently some sanitation issues with the copy and pasty with the terminal. Oh, I hate when that happens. Yeah. Those freaking weird back quotes. That's that seem to be everywhere. They got to I wish they would it. get rid of them. They should, like, abolish them from, like, like ASCII and freaking Unicode, and they'll be gone forever. So, um, you know, since we are Linux Gamecast, maybe we should... Talk about some games, man. What do you think? That's crazy talk. It's crazy crazy talk. talk. So let's be crazy. Let's be crazy. And talk about really slick stock comms. Retro slick. Retro boost. Well, to be honest with you, when a guy sends you an email, it's like, yeah, I quit my job at NASA. At NASA. That's where I started reading the email. I was like, oh, you quit your job at what? All right. So what is retro? Booster. Retro Booster is a high tension survival shooter with the classic thrust ship, aggressive enemies, speed flying challenges, puzzles, creepy worlds, and fiery death lurking in pretty much everywhere. It basically sounds like Canada, doesn't it? It does. I would have no idea what this game actually looks like, though, because they're. Um... Yeah, I think you ran into some issues, didn't you? Yeah, their uh, their demo RPM does not work. I get a seg fault when I run the uh, run the program. So they have a tarball. I have yet to inspect that. I was about to ask you about that. Um, do you think you have better luck with the tarball? We're going to take a look at the video. I I, I, I have no idea. I'm I, I'm noticing um, I'm noticing some uh, Mesa LibGL things, which was um, what Steam was choking on. So it may just be a matter of um, F sixteen's using some older versions of the libraries and that may not be working as well. So I'm gonna give that a spin on the laptop and see what happens. Well it's a boot time. But check that out at reallyslick.com. It it looks like a fun game. I mean it's a two point five D and I really hate when people use that term, but that is I guess the most accurate way to describe it. Isometric? Yeah, maybe. Eh, it's a halfling. Anyways, our next story comes from a site that sounds like a kind of cheese. Photonica? From photonica-game.com. I don't know, it kind of reminds me of Fontanella. Fontanella? The hell is Fontanella? I don't know. Maybe I'm hallucinating a type of cheese. I seem to remember there being a type of cheese. Maybe someone in the comments will mention it. Either way. To be perfectly honest with you, hallucinating a type of cheese is a proper band (laughs) name. Did, well, there you go. Um, but this is a, this is a fun little game that actually works right out of the box because it's using Unity. Um, I played a little bit of it. It's kind of like a hybrid between like Mirror's Edge and Bit Trip Runner. Then, what are your thoughts? I would definitely go with the Bit Trip Runner, as you can see here in our video. Um. Imagine it's, what it would look like head on, you know, if you were taking it all in the face, I guess one could say. And, and, and hence my uh, Mirror's Edge comparison. It's fun, but this is not a game for people with high blood pressure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I should mention that these guys or, were or kind ep- of. Or epilepsy. Mm-hmm. Unless you're a sporting epileptic, then. Mm, Maybe. Yeah, give it a, give it a shot. Let us you know, make sure you got the camera on record. Send us a copy. But I enjoyed it. It is damn difficult, man. 
Yeah, I, I didn't spend that much time playing it because actually, while I started, you called me and we had to hammer out some show notes stuff. So That's it's your right. fault. That, that was last night. Completely my fault. Fun game. Your fault. Definitely want to check these guys out. And unfortunately, by the time this is out, you can no longer pay what you want. But it is available at Photonica. Dash game Dash games com. and it's also available on the Mac App Store on Live, Steam Greenlight, and Desira. Desira. But it's time for some heavy metal. Oh. Are you talking about generals gathered in their masses? Just like witches at Black Masses. Oh, hell yeah. And that brings Ex us to. Except Black point. Sabbath has nothing to do with this game. No, as not at all. As... I don't even know why we went there. But we... I don't know. You you brought it up. I I, I was gonna either make like a Dragula reference or like a or a Heroes reference from Motorhead. But we there really you go. should have went with a Dragula reference. That would have worked better. But here we are. Unfortunately, it's not your. How we do this live? It's Road Rebel with music by Rob Zombie, Motorhead, and Pussy Riot by Monstrous. Yes. Um, these guys were known for making um, coin slot games way back in the day, and when I say way back in the day, we're talking less than a decade ago. Indeed. So what have they got for us, man? We got 64 backers, 11 grand pledged out of 300k, which seems a bit high, but they're doing something a bit unique. Am I wrong? They are taking a really interesting development model. I think I like it, but I want to see where that goes. <laughs> if you back the game, you get access to the source code. Okay. That so you can you can make contributions and you can test builds. At least I I'm, as far as I understand, that's what's happening. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're, they 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 want to stress crowd development. This is a Unity game, so it supports everything, including Plan Nine. Um, but um. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of interesting that they're saying you are paying. It, it, it's an interesting way of monetizing that, where you say you give us the money and we give you the code, and you can start mucking about with it and making the game better. Well, you know, I think that is kind of violating um, Kickstarter policy. But this did come in before it took effect. You know, the CEO actually sent us a note, um, Jason um, Asba. Um, just to tell us about it and he said you know the reason we're doing a kickstarter is my team and i i'm quoting knew that no publisher in their right mind would let us do what we want to do with our game like road rebel and that's release it under linux first not last yeah that, that's pretty neat too thought that was awesome run a live crowd development effort bring the game decision makers you know people who are playing it backers get early access but also as you said releasing all that fantastic wet stinky source code but here's something i found kind of interesting oh was that man and it's not the skater girls man no i'm a fan of the skater girls yeah i'm a fan of them here they are um no it's the tank ten thousand dollars drive and destroy ever drive a tank yes i have wanna again possibly <laughs> back at this um, level and that's exactly what you get to do I would drive a tank I just don't know would you drive a tank Again, no, yeah. un un unfortunately, unfortunately no, one, no, one's no one's actually pushed pushed the, level. Pushed the level they got one they got guy one who, guy who uh, tossed in 3500 bucks or upwards, 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 upwards of that um, I would maybe, drive, maybe, drive maybe, a tank in the general's, in the general's rink, rink. <laughs> pleased to meet you pleased to meet you hope you guess my name is it the devil? No, my name is Ben, man. It says, like, right there on the lower third, you dumbass. Can't you read? Well, I... Well, shut up, Mr. <laughs> devil. Fancy pants. <laughs> right. So, Mr. No Pants, Mr. I can only see your torso and above. Check these guys out at kickstarter.com. We'll have a link in the show notes. Looks like a fun project. Um, bit ambitious of a goal, wouldn't you say? I'd say it's a bit ambitious. I don't. I think they're gonna fall short, but I don't. I don't necessarily think they're doing this for the money. I think they're trying to get a lot more publicity. 
I think they're definitely going to get some publicity for that. So good on them, and the link good will be them. in the show notes. But up next, let's talk about M O O N, and that spells Europa. Yes, I never really pegged you for a Stan, uh, Stephen King's The Stand fan, but there you go. Oh, that m- and then, movie was. Are you doing the drinking game at home, kids? Awesome sauce. <laughs> Uh, this is from uh, quickfingers.net, and this is uh, Europa, and they have a driving physics and gameplay. Video. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, this guy is really hell-bent on making everything accurate, and I guess we should point out that uh, Europa started originally as part of the 7D FPS project, seven days to create an FPS game. This is in Unity, and I think one thing that's really cool about Unity, and me and Jordan agreed on this, if I'm right, is... It just runs. Yeah. You don't have to go, oh, will there be a Linux port? You go, oh, Unity engine at the beginning, you know, logo, hmm, it's running on Linux. That's so neat. I know. And there's, like, no work involved on getting it running either. It's, it's pretty much what everyone else needs to start doing. Grateful for that. But he does note, and still haven't fully finalized the physics model um, this little cart will be your main transportation throughout the game my moon the size of Europa yeah this guy's mental with what he's doing to accurately recreate the like mass weight of certain elements that might be in an asteroid pulling on the moon to affect gravity so yes but yeah. he didn't heed the aliens' warnings from 2010. The Odyssey continues. Stay away from Europa. Oh, I thought it said Kanichiwa, bitches. Well, I guess if you're reading the Japanese translation of 2010, The Odyssey continues, that mm. might be a bit different. For those of you who are going, what the hell are you talking about? 2010 is the sequel to 2001: A Space Odyssey. Okay, I think we got that cleared up. But up next in our gaming bit of madness, Quantum Bytes. Roll. Quantum Bytes on the GitHubs. Now you're wondering maybe what this is. This is um, Anaroth. Relics of Anaroth. Yeah, this right here, portal.anaroth-game.com, uh, alpha sign-up. Pretty much anyone can get in. We covered this, what, man, like four or five weeks ago? Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we've spoken about this. But their launcher is gpl I think that's kind of awesome. They are leaning towards the open sourciness, so it is available right now. Pre-work is it, um, QT5, ICU, OpenSSL, LibTorrent, which they do use Torrent for the distribution. Boost, <laughs> QMake, that makes me cringe. QMake again yeah. makes me cringe more than make. But no make install, that's a bit kind of sad. But you know what? Let's let's do it the Slackware way. Copy and paste is your package management. Or copy and NRM. I not. guess whatever works, but this is a beautiful game, man. I mean, we have really... The, the landscapes look pretty. It's an MMO, so I'm not going to play it, but... It's almost impossible to find how to get to this. Look up their wikia, and you can find a place... Um, to grab the game. I think you can go to news and you can grab the networking alpha launcher from their forums which is in the wiki. Or you could try to build it yourself. Yeah. And just, I mean, it's, it looks unity to me, but I can't swear to it. So. You can't swear to it. And I don't Uh, like swearing. It's using, it's using unengine. Oh, you engine. Yeah, you engine. Same critters from Oil Rush, so it definitely is pretty much Monable as hell. That's going to be fun to watch because it's a beautiful In, engine. A bit heavy, in, but. But, I mean, come on. We got the hardware to support it now. Yeah, we got the hardware to support it, but I think this is about time to wrap up our Linux Gamecast Weekly for this week. Am I right, man? I'd say it is. We should probably tell these clowns to check us out on linuxgamecast.com or youtube.com slash 
Linux Gamecast. And check out our podcast. You click that podcast link, you get all the information to subscribe to us on iTunes, Video SD Audio, and Video HD. And as always, this is going to be brought to you by Amazon.com affiliate link. Click that. Not brought to you. it. Now, click it twice. Bookmark it. Every time you go to Amazon, click that link. Do your shopping. You are helping... Um, I don't know. If, if, if you think about it, it actually kind of makes your product, you, the thing you're buying, a bit cheaper because you're getting more value back because we make a better show. And we'll keep coming back. And if you don't, don't click that link. We'll probably stop coming back at some point. But you can also make a donation. And when I mean donation, I mean just give us money. But we're going to immediately throw that back into all that cool stuff we said at the beginning, which is no lie because last time we got a few shackles we bought keys for everyone and gave them away in a contest because we're horrible like that, aren't we? Yes, we are under-publicized contest because people figured out, hey, if we don't tell anyone, we're more likely to win. Actually, actually, you, you sent me a funny email about the uh, about the uh, contest. Um, someone apparently echoes my distaste for Serious Sam 3 and asked if he can change the key. Yeah, I guess we should mention that it- Somebody did write, um, we've only had one unclaimed key so far outside of that, but he said, could I please get a copy of Ensign 1 instead of Sirius Sam 3? I don't really want that. Uh, uh, he he showed that to me, and he, he couldn't see it just because this is an email. But I was just, like, chuckling my butt off. I was at work when this was happening, and, yeah, I got a bunch of weird looks. You were the guy laughing like a retard at work, weren't you? I've been there. I'm, al- I'm always the guy laughing like a retard at work. But anyways... Let's wrap this up, LinuxGameCast.com, and you can always find Jordan C. at the Burning Fool, right? And you can always find Mr. Ben Stone at, at Ben Stone, or plus Ben Stone. And plus Jordan's... I've told you how to pronounce it, and you're German. You have no excuse. Yes. That's it, everybody. Have a good night. Bye! Oh, and stick around. For our after show, after show. yeah, after show coming up next. Jordan, um, tell them about the after show before they get the um, scary things going in their systems. Um, if you watch the after show, you will be mentally scarred. I highly recommend it. Seal of approval. We're going to spoil everything. Basically, anything that you've never watched, we're going to spoil it. Foul language you've never heard, we're going to say it, and it probably will not. Like, 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 like cork spliggle? You have no idea what that means. We're going to tell you. This man will tell you, and he will tell you hard. So I stay away from it. So. Don't keep watching. Cut it off, and we'll see you next week, unless you're going to keep watching because you are a sadist. Cheers, guys. Just... Ciao. The following sign indicates that this is a zone of spoilers. There's also extreme profanity. You have been warned. Warn, 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 warn. And welcome back. As this sign indicates, you are now in the spoiler zone. It's not like the danger zone because we really couldn't afford to license that. And I think it is Anna. covered by too many things. Lana! Lana! Oh, whoever Lana is, I think that's somebody he might have known in a past life. No, no, I was making an Archer reference. As I said, you need to, you need to watch Archer. So I, I they... commend that of you. It's probably on Netflix. You have so. I think we were going to talk about. Let me see if I can pull this up. Yes. Let's open yet another this, tab. This bizarre little thing that you came across. Yeah, and it just came a out. Um, Dragon Ball GT. Made by fans called Dragon Ball Absalon. Well, you know, I think it was actually made by people who enjoyed the show because fans only do one like, no, thing. No, 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 like, like uh, one of the guys from DBZ Abridged is in there, uh, Masako X. No, the fan, guy who fans Goku only do one thing, Jordan. Fans only Was... kill people in South Korea in their sleep. That's all fans do. Yeah. But, I mean, it's interesting. I watched it. It's not bad. I mean, for a fan work. It's not like, bad, but man, that intro was painful to get through. Oh yeah, no, they and really not the intro. Have, like, the, the actual no, no, intro no, no, no. was. I, I'm just saying. Um, like, this, with this, this, the, this, the this part right here, right here, with Vegeta and Kakarot. 
Yeah, no, but this was like this was at the end of GT. This is implied to be at the end of GT. Oh, so you see, I never finished GT. I tried, man. Yeah, okay. So this is just like a recap, like previously on the Dragon Ball. Previously saga, on Dragon Ball Z, without Kyle Hebert. They, re- you know, what? and Kyle Hebert does this kind of shit. They had no excuse not to get him. And also for the guy, the guy who voiced Vegeta was the same guy who voiced Gohan, and or. Uh, no, it was it was the guy who voiced Goat. Voiced Goat. Twelve years later, Batman. But either way, like there there were people that you could get that would have done a much better job. Like the guys, they already had one of the DBZ average guys. They could have easily for that one line. They could have easily gotten like freaking Lanny Fator to fucking record that. Where is that one painful? The one that really almost cost the episode for me. It was the bad guy's sidekick, and you know who I'm talking of. Oh, the fucking Jar Jar character? Yeah. Fucking what happens when you, like, feed your gremlins and get them wet after midnight? Yeah, it was the voice acting with that. He was like, it was the most typical, like, yeah, I'm just he, going to... He, 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 was, he, was, he was like the fucking little gremlin with the scouter. I like the new scouters, good though. I think that design was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, like, there, there's things I like about it. It's just kind of odd. I find it incredibly odd. I'm it, 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 I'm annoyed that it caught my attention because now, good or bad, I'm going to have to see where this thing goes. You got to give them. I mean, for an independent studio, the animation. I mean, it's very Americanized, though. It is, but that's just because it's really cheap. Yeah, I mean, I like I like, I like the direction of it for the most part. I like how it's cut. Here he is, this voice right here. Now, yeah, you like the this scouter. freaking guy. Oh, and what's with their eyes, man? Did you notice that? Did you notice the like the uh, random twitching? Thing? I didn't really pay attention to that. Uh, you know what? For one, I thought like some of the fight scenes were pretty well animated. That um, I'm confused about now. There's like what two trunks? There's like new future trunks. And he has a giant fucking sword now? Now, I saw that, and it's like, oh, Trunks showed back up again and again, and he's like, oh, I missed it again, I'm late again, or something like that. I'm like, wow, this guy has the worst timing ever. No wonder he's single throughout all the Dragon Balls. It would have been awesome even if Goten, he... e- Or even Goten gets a fucking girlfriend, and he's useless. If he jumped out of the pod, and there's like six or seven floppy dildos popped in, like, damn it, I'm late again. <laughs> Man, oh, but you know what? It's 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 pretty well done. Yeah, um, I like it. I, it's only going to be a three-part miniseries, the best I can gather from it. And apparently, so it, 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 it's, it's, it's going to be it's right. going to be two more of these. It's going to be two more of these. Looks like it's going to be two more of these, man. I'm interested to see if they can manage to like complete the story in two episodes, because like that's the problem. Like, the dialogue is very much in the vein of Dragon Ball, and Dragon Ball's dialogue is very verbose. It describes everything that's going on. I think so it's a I lot like this GT, gonna... but it's missing one key element, in my humble opinion, man. What? What is it missing? The humor. Yeah! Yeah, even Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT had, like, jokes. This was all very serious. I th- no, no, they, they tried to do it when they had, like, fucking... Oog playing Wii with his kids. Yeah, but... Uh, uh, what, what do you think about that? Oob and Pan. Well, my first thought was like, well, Pan, da 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 Oob and Pan. I didn't see that coming, but I'm, I'm, I'm alright with that, I And guess. where the fuck did Pan learn? I, I, yeah, when did Pan learn instant transmission? That would have been really useful, like, constantly. That would have been Deus Ex Machina right there, man. Just wham, done. Wham, she has instant transmission. Arguably the best power in all of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> the thing that lets you be anywhere. And I'm just like, fuck it, burritos. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Definitely check that out. That You can oh, look yeah, at yeah. it. Dragon Ball yeah, no, Absalon I, episode 1. Absalon. I wonder, what, I, wonder, I wonder what Absalon actually... Is that even a word? Is Does it mean something? Find it for Absol- us. 
Query the ghouls. I will find this. Um, apparently a Danish archbishop and statesman, also known as Axel. Um... Uh, a French mountain biker, a musical work, a class, an Absalon class command and support ship of the Danish Navy. No, it doesn't seem like uh, I've heard like Absalon class used in space references. I don't know. Oh, okay, so there's an Absalom. Is it Absalon or Absalom? I think it's Absalom. Not on, but on. Let's see. Here. On. On, yeah. Yeah, because Absalom is like a ship in a tube. It probably translates like into something we couldn't possibly get sued over. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a science fiction short story by Henry Cutner, anthologized anthologized in the collection Tomorrow the Stars. But um, I I don't know what this is in reference to. I don't know, man. Do you think you're going to keep watching it, though? I, I guess I have to, as a, as, as, a, as a Dragon Ball fan. It's like some weird, stupid crack cocaine. It's like, yeah. yeah. This morning I mean, when I woke up, it's like way too early. I mean, this video only had like 300 and something views when I first watched it. Mm -hmm. And as it goes, Oh, yeah. Absalon is also a post-apocalyptic science fiction thriller film. And refers to more people. Hmm. Oh, Christopher Lambert stars in it. I like Christopher Lambert. He was awesome in Highlander. And then sucked in everything else. He was... You know, it's a shame they never finished the Highlander movies. They really could have made a um, second one. No, I don't think so. I, I I I think the uh, I think the Highlander movie was good enough on its own. I don't know. I mean, the Highlander movie to me is the TV, the, the kind TV of like show was all right. I, I really enjoyed Adrian Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for its time, that was, except for that horrible thing, the Raven they tried to do with the um that um Highlander chick. It was just horrible. Oh man, bad. that was that was that was weak. Uh, no, that was not, not awesome no. sauce, ladies and gentlemen. That was weak sauce. Man, I gotta I gotta track down a torrent now of freaking um, of the Highlander TV series. I gotta watch. You know, that. it's okay. all on um, Quickster. Yes, I don't know if it's on Canadian Netflix though. And honestly, do you know what is coming to Canadian Netflix though? Yeah, you posted a story about that. I don't remember what it was though. Yeah, you're going like, to get what? all ABC the gear. Yeah, well, yeah, ABC, Fox, and all. You're gonna get Fringe, man. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. The problem is, I really don't want to have to like open up the PPA thing. I have to. I don't want to have to install a virtual machine to go to the PPA repository. And um, you know, you can do what I do, and I just watch it on my ten-inch tablet. Ah, yes, that is true. I do have. Actually, I was very impressed. I was. I was streaming video on my tablet the other day. Uh, it is it is remarkably good for that. Yeah, it's something I, I think I have to show a couple of weeks back, maybe last week, week before that. I this mean, your Skype quality uh, from your uh, moon device looks better than from yeah, your Linux box somehow. And this was like, I don't know. I freaking love this phone. It's great. The only problem is it's ruined by sensor proportions. Everything is just minuscule in my hands now. It's little girly man toys. It, it's like I picked up my I picked up my friend's iPhone the other day, and I'm like, "Wow, this is dinky." Mm -hmm. How do you um? Wh what is the um? Did you remember the um Android commercial? And it's like, how do you even see on this thing, man? Uh, no, I didn't do that. Though I can't. It 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 concerns me that people are actually reading ebooks on like iPhone sized devices because that's really small. I, don't I didn't know. even do that when I had, like I, I I have my busted HTC Desire right here, and I never read ebooks on this thing. I just knew like the it, I it's not good for my eyes. Like 
at worst, I played a fucking Game Boy emulator on here. Uh, the smallest thing I carry around is my Nexus, and I can hold a Nexus 7 inch tablet much like a phone easily. I normally. Yes, because you're a colossal bastard. Not really. I mean, there's a gerbil. <laughs> so I, I can't really hold a wireless gerbil normally. I have to kind of back off of it. Because my hand just covers it. It's neat. But a 10-inch tablet's perfect for me. I carry it around. It's my phone. I have a really, you know, awesome sauce pair of Bluetooth headsets that double as um, that Anoyatron speaker, you know, in earpiece. So I can make calls. Mm -hmm. Which, mind you, is Which. really handy. When you don't want to be ignored. really handy, annoyed by people, you, you know, you're at the lo local taco shop and whatnot, sit down trying to watch something streaming. Man, you're Plex making you really making me want a taco now. Tacos what the hell is wrong? So with you? awesome! I need tacos, or else I might explode. Yeah, we should get tacos. But this, anyways, the little blue thing, man. That when I'm like, hey, what's in? You just tap on it. You're like, I'm I'm on a call, you're lying through your teeth. You're watching something. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. That's a man who's watching something right there. So, anything else new, fun, fuck uh, all? Well, I, I had the freaking song from CB4 stuck in my head. Hmm. How does that go? I'm black, y'all. I'm black, y'all. And I'm blacker than black, and I'm black, y'all. <laughs> By the sweat know. of his balls, man. It's been... <laughs> <laughs> it's been stuck in my head for like a week now. It doesn't stop. Man, you gotta lay off whatever it is, man. No, I just get songs stuck in my head. Man. Like, constantly. I'm never mm. without like a song stuck in my head. Which is why I'm constantly listening to music, so I can at least try to force the one song in my head. No, that's really cool. Um, a couple of days ago, I, I meant to make a post, but I never got around to it. I had, um... Bulls on Parade stuck in my head. Needless to say, it was an awesome day, though, because I had that as my personal soundtrack in the brain organ, which was good stuff. Yeah, I guess. But for me, I never get it just for, like, one day. It's always for, like, weeks. Mm. I spent I had, too much like, time playing. I, I had Heaven music. and Hell from by Black Sabbath, like, from the, D, from, from the first Dio Sabbath album, stuck in my head for a month. That was horrible. I can never listen to that song again just because I'm sick of it. It's a great song, but I've heard it so many times because it was stuck in my head for a month. Yeah, but then again, man, you have the same problem with, you know, Swiss cheese, man. I mean, with Swiss cheese? What the hell are you talking about? What does cheese have anything to do with this? Can you even eat cheese, you vegan bastard? That's a man in denial right there. He can't face his fears. Fears of what? The Swissiness cheese? of the cheese, man. I just don't like Swiss. You don't want it in your head, man. I know. Apparently, there's something wrong with me for not liking Swiss cheese. I just don't like the taste of it. You know, no, I don't eat cheese, to be honest with you. You don't eat cheese. No, sir, I do not. Yes, because you're a vegan. Yes, I'm a hippie moon bat vegan. You are but no, 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 no. You say you're vegan because you hate plants. Well, I do hate plants. Yeah. He wants to convert all plants into poop. Anyways, um, I think we've drifted on long enough. Mm, almost. Or do we want to go for like a full hour of after show? Mm -mm. Have we even gotten a full hour of after show? Probably not. But you know, one thing I did get working today was um this thingy. What? Ah, yes, your lava lamp. Yeah, I found that when I was cleaning out in the basement today, making room for the cars to pack them up for the wintertime, and I learned a trick because it didn't work when I cut it on after the first time in probably six years. You so know. what's the trick for revitalizing your lava lamps? Ovens. Ovens. Not really forward-thinking. I did have to look it up, and I said, oh, it's just like one big blob of goo, you know, um, coming back up and down. You put it in the oven about 300 degrees um, Fahrenheit, not centigrade, because that'd be a bit hot. Um, 
I'd say about 15 It's minutes. weird. Whenever I think of temperatures in ovens, I always think of in Fahrenheit, but everywhere else I think of it in degrees. No. I think that's just because all the ovens are in all the ovens in Canada are in Fahrenheit, so my well. Seriously, welcome to my world with like even speech. <laughs> I have no sympathy for you, you sick bastard. <laughs> Anyways. Um, is there any, oh, has there been a new Blood and Chrome? There has. Yeah, I did watch some of that, man. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. I completely forgot oh, about that. Oh, you should have watched I need, it. I need to watch this now. I think episodes five and six are up now. Yeah. Hmm. And they're doing it in two parters, but I think we mentioned that, didn't we? Yeah. Mm. But man, no, that's been getting really good really quickly. And I'm 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 just stifled by the lack of it every week. If that doesn't get picked up, I'm seriously going to get stabby with a lot of like Someone needs to things pick that, that up. need to be stabbied with. That's way too good. It's too good. Networks. Why aren't you picking this up? Listeners, mail your networks. Watch Blood and Chrome. Yes. And orgasm them at the trees. awesome sauceness. That is Battlestar Galactica, Blood and Chrome. And if you're keeping track, that's seven shots in. You know, I speaking of shots, I do have to say this is probably the first Linux Gamecast Weekly that I've done completely sober. Really? Yeah. I have I I've been sober for a bunch of them, and I feel those are my weakest shows. But I know you're always you're always a bit drunk when you're a bit drunk. A bit drunk. Smashed. Yeah. Ah, man. No, but uh, I think I've always told you I like to have my Mitch head bug, which is mm. anybody who's... To hell with purple people. Unless they're <laughs> suffocating, then help them. Elevators temporarily become stairs. Escalators. Always like to have, like, one or two drinks before you sit down just to... That. I don't know what that is, but... Get you a little bit hammered so that you... They're not even hammered, mode. but I'm just like, man. But by the time you roll around to the after show, it's like, ah, all right, this is kind of fun trying to switch this video, which unfortunately you can't really do hammered, which kind of limits some of the entertainment that could possibly happen if we had a third From person. seeing my ugly mug. It's good that it's... Fo oh. <laughs> Hi, people. <laughs> How are you today? There. I am good. Yay, Jordan special. <laughs> hey, Jordan. Yeah, what's up? You, you know what might help you out? What? Maybe, maybe you should have a little veg. A little edge? A little veg. A little... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And again, folks, he references this thing that we dare not broadcast for this for hopes that you do not have to suffer through that wow <laughs> veg a little bit of edge man just a little a little bit of edge <laughs> <laughs> all right i think of that wraps it up <laughs> That's us for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. As always, you can check us out at linuxgamecast.com. Check out our little podcast thingy for the internet that we do that yeah. hopefully you're watching right now. Kick in a few quid if you can. Check out our YouTube page, forward slash Linux. Well, it's YouTube, forward slash that Linux That Amazon Gamecast. referral link dealie that... Bam. Just click on that. Buy shit from Amazon. Amazon buy Jordan some veg. Jordan really needs some veg. Or just make a donation and it's, maybe we can I, send I some veg. veg his way. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You can check this asshole out at Venstone on Twitter. And plus Ben Stone on the Google Plus and that's Yeah. And here's the veg herself, Jordan. Um at the burning pool. <laughs> plus Jordan's Vang on the G Plus and that's and I think that's going to that be That is it. the Linux Gamecast after show. Good night, people. Cheers. <laughs>